A first step that you can do once you find the two files that differ within a BIOS image is you can throw it into a hex editor in order to examine the differences just to get a quick cut idea of what the differences are. So here we're using HXD's file compare and you can see here in the hacked version it has a C3 and in the original version it has a 8B and if we hit F6 we can search for any additional differences and so for this simple example there's only a single byte difference. So if you're familiar with x86 assembly you should recognize C3 is a return instruction. So Now when we throw these files into IDA we can analyze them just as any other uh, portable executable file because UEFI uses portable executable as its file format for PIMS and Dixie drivers. So looking at the analyzed files, this is the entry point for the hacked file. It's just a single return instruction, whereas the entry point for the original file has some legitimate code. So here, in this very simple example, uh, because this is the, the TPM driver, the attacker has put a single return instruction at the entry point so that it would immediately complete and it would never do any of its activity in order to initialize the TPM. So if we look at and uh, analyze the code over here, uh, we could use the pseudocode view and this would just tell us we have uh, a dereference at offset 24 followed by a call. So this is this sort of looks like standard thing you would see when you have function pointer usage. If you've reverse engineered C++ you'd see a lot of that. So one thing we can do in order to improve analysis of UEFI is we can load definitions for the data structures that UEFI uses. So to that end, um, Snare, who did the talk on attacking EFI on, on Apple's firmware, he uh, released a file called behemoth.h, which included a bunch of data structure definitions from, um, from the EFI specification. So we don't care about these errors for now. We just go ahead, and so it's loaded in all these structure definitions, uh, and just a few of them had some errors with their definitions, but it doesn't matter enough to be worth fixing. So what we can do now is we can insert some of these uh, data structures. So we go to add a data structure, and then we select add a standardized data structure. We sort the names so that it's sorted alphabetically, and then we can find things like EFI, PEI, services. And so this is a standard uh, runtime, this is the standard services that are used by uh, PIMS. They're used to, it's basically the, the system provides a bunch of function pointers. So if we expand this, we can see that uh, this structure has a header and then it has a bunch of function pointers for installing a PIM to PIM interface, reinstalling a PIM to PIM interface, locate PIM to PIM interface, and so forth. So the usage of the CFI structures table is basically going to be that it's going to be a bunch of functions that PIMs will generally call that the lower level system has provided for them. So the other structure we're going to add that's very common is an EFI GUID. That's a 16-byte uh, data structure which is used as the name for a number of uh, used as a name for a number of protocols, used as a name for the files in the file system, and so forth. So if we look at that, it's just 16 bytes. That's often structured as a D word, two words, and then eight bytes. So going back to the assembly, we can infer that because this is a PIM, it's probably using the PEI services immediately when it starts out. So it takes in uh, this argument, it dereferences it to get uh, the value in ECX, and then here's the sort of standard uh, dereferencing a, a structure or are using an offset inside of a structure. So if we hypothesize, if we hit T in order to apply a structure there, and we hypothesize that the structure is EFI PEI services, then we apply that and we can also go to the pseudocode and do the same thing, hit Y to apply that and we can name that 
and the EFI PEI services pointer pointer and when we do that we see that it simplifies to saying okay it took A2 and it's specifically the offset 24 was the install PPI function so it's calling install PPI right off the bat right in its entry point and so it's passing an argument which is the A2 which is the pointer to the PEI services and then it's passing a structure so we can just double click on that structure and see that IDA's already filled in that it's an EFI, PEI, PPI descriptor. It's basically just saying for these PIM to PIM uh, interfaces, this is the data structure. And so mousing over it, we can see there's flags, a GUID, which is sort of the, the name of the PPI, and then the PPI itself, which can be a, a function pointer. So this would be the flags. This would be a pointer to the GUID. So if we double click on that, we can take this and we can define it to be a GUID. So we'll apply this structure EFI GUID to here. And additionally, with these GUIDs, we often like to determine whether we've actually, whether they're well-known GUIDs or whether they're some sort of proprietary GUID. And so to that end, we have, again, from uh, Snare, there's a thing called EFI GUIDs.py, which has a bunch of GUIDs which uh, he, d he pulled out of the header files for the uh, UDK. And so we can just go ahead and search for this and see if we find it. In this case, we don't find anything. So we'll go back and we'll hit escape to go back to the data structure. So that was the pointer to the GUID. Oh, I'm going to go name that quick. Call that unknown GUID1. So there's the pointer to the GUID and then there's a pointer to a function. So this right here is right above here, that's the function. And so this is the function which would actually be called if someone were using this PIM to PIM interface. So again, we can pseudocode that, but uh, we can speculate that the argument one here, as with many arguments, is going to be just another pointer to the PEI services. So we can apply that same uh, definition to argument one. We can just uh, speculate that it's going to look like this, a pointer pointer to PEI services and then we'll apply the same definition to this thing v1 that it's just uh, assigning it to and then once we've done that we can go down and look at the pseudocode and it turns out that was a correct uh, inference that the first argument was just going to be a pointer to the EFI services the PEI services and so now we have things filled in so we can see there's an if statement and the first thing it's doing is if locate PPI so it's you know trying to look up some other PIM to PIM interface and if that succeeds then it'll do something like get boot mode it'll call a couple of functions and ultimately it'll then do another install PPI so let's go look at that data structure just for the fun of it alright so this should be the data structure but there's already some stuff defined in here so we're going to undefine it and then define it to the full structure so that and that. Then we're going to define this to be a EFI PEI PPI descriptor. And so now again we have the same sort of here's the flags, here's the pointer to the GUID, and here's a pointer to the uh, function which would be called if this PPI was used. In this case it's null, so this, this won't actually be used for function pointer. Um, and again, this is this, the EFI GUID. We can apply that structure. And again, we can search to see if this is a known GUID or if it's just some proprietary thing. It could either be something standard or it can be a proprietary thing that they've made up themselves. In this case, it is a known standard uh, GUID. It's PEI, TPM initialized PPI. So it's basically a PPI which has the purpose of telling the system that the TPM has been initialized. So other PIMs can search for this PEI TPM initialized, and if they find it, then it means the TPM has been su su successfully initialized. And so the main point here is that with this application of well-known data structures and the searching for well-known uh, GUIDs, uh, we can, find, we can uh, get much more readable source code out of, um, out of the PIMs and other uh, PIMs and Dixie drivers and other components of UEFI uh, firmware.